Hey guys, it's Thomas here with Technovision and welcome to episode two of our JDA tutorial series. Now, like we mentioned in the last episode, we need to do something about this uh, horrible piece of code here where we are exposing our private information, our bot token, to the source code. We want to move this out to a config file where we can change it out as needed and make sure that nobody has access to it in our source code. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to set up a config file and load it in our actual source code. So to do that, we're going to create a new file in our project root directory. So come up over here to the uh, your project root directory up at the top and you want to right click new and create a file. And we're going to create a .n file. And this is going to be a file that holds key value pairs for environment variables, which are pretty much just global variables that can be accessible anywhere in your project. So uh, you want this to be named .env uh, and hit enter. And that will create the .env file. And uh, you can just start throwing key value pairs in here. So the only one we really need right now is, of course, a variable for this token. So let's just create a variable in our .m file called token. And uh, it's best to make these all uppercase if you can. And then set that equal to, and you can just set it equal to whatever you need. So let's go ahead and uh, throw our, our bot token in there. So copy and paste. Great, so we now have a uh, environment variable called token that points to our bots token. Great. Uh, one thing I should mention though is that usually when you are uh, putting this sort of project on GitHub or sharing this source code with somebody, you never want to include the .env file because obviously this is going to contain all of your sensitive information. But it's still very important to let people know what the names of the key value pairs are. So what I recommend doing is creating another file here, new uh, file in the root directory, called .env.example. Uh, the reason we add this dot example in the end is that it makes it not an env file but uh, it's sort of a, a common way to let people know that this is what your env file should look like you can enter and in this uh, particular file you can just include all of your key value pair names uh, without any of the values so for example we could just copy this part here token equals and uh, put it in here so uh, pretty much the reason we're doing this is when you you know upload this project to GitHub or whatever you're going to do with it in the future, you would not include this file. You would uh, make sure that this is not added to the repository, but you would add this file. And that way when someone adds your project or wants to run it or whatever the case is, they'll know, oh, hey, I need to add a bot token here. And you can slowly add more stuff here over time. So for example, we could put like a uh, database. So you could add a... Uh, Oh, that is not how you spell database, database. Uh, you could add a, a connection string to a database here, or you could add uh, like a prefix for a text command or anything that you want people to be able to, to change out really easily. And here you could put uh, in this .env file. But of course, we're just gonna do token for right now because that's the only thing we really need uh, for our program. So yeah, now that we have these two things, uh, we no longer actually need this uh, code in our um, this uh, bot token in our code so we can delete this but now we have an issue of course uh, we don't have access to our token in the source code we only have access to it in uh, our env file so we're going to get a, a new library called dot env java to actually uh, take care of that so to get dot env what you want to do is head over to your palm.xml file over here open this up and if you remember from the last episode, we have this dependency section where you can add libraries over time that we're going to be using in this project. So we're going to add it right here, right below the JDA dependency, uh, but we need to get it from their repo. So if you head to the description of this video, there will be a link to this website right here, which is the .env Java repo on GitHub. And just like JDA, they also have the Maven central badge that shows the current version of the, uh, the library. In this case, it's 2.2.4, but it might be different for you in the future. Uh, but if you actually scroll down, they actually provide the Maven and the Gradle uh, little dependency tag here. So whichever one you're using, we're using Maven in this case. We're going to copy the section right here, and we're just going to paste it in our palm.xml. Paste. And there we go, it's now added, and we just have to click this uh, load Maven changes button in the top right corner. Very important to make sure that everything loads into your project. And yeah, so now that we've added this uh, dependency to our project, we can head back to our main class, and we're gonna actually create a config object in our main class. 
So let's make a private final, and the object we're gonna use here is a .env object. That's what the library comes with. So .env, and we're gonna call this config uh, because it is pretty much the config for our project. Uh, and we can import this .env class here. There we go, perfect. Uh, now we need to actually set this to something. So let's uh, go down into our constructor for a tutorial bot here. And uh, we're gonna load in pretty much all of the environment variables from this .env file. So we can set config equal to uh, .env dots and then configure and then dots load. You can also do uh, if you want dot ignore if missing dot load if you want to sort of ignore this if it's if you don't have the dot env file or maybe if you want to you know have some sort of custom handling of that but uh, for now I'm just gonna do dot load and uh, that will load in pretty much wherever the dot env file is in your root project directory. Cool, so we now have this config file, and if we wanna access any of these key value pairs here, so like for example, if we wanted to access token, uh, this value right here, we would take our config, and we would call uh, get. So config.get, and you're just gonna pass in pretty much the name of the, uh, the environment variable you want. So in our case, token. And that would actually get this, uh, this value here. So if, for example, you had another uh, sort of uh, the key value pair called database, you could do the same thing with database. And I think it's important to keep, uh, I believe it's case sensitive, so make sure it's all capitals for everything. But yeah, so this is gonna actually get our token for our bot. So let's set this equal to a, a string here. So string token is equal to config.getToken. And now we can pass this token into our create default. And yeah, this should be actually working great. Uh, let me just really quickly add a getter for this uh, .env config because we are going to be using this in other classes later on. So uh, up here, let's create a public .env uh, get config, <clears throat> and we can just return the config. Cool. So we have a getter, and now we can run the bots again, either in the top right corner here uh, with this run configuration, or you can just right click on the main class and run. And hopefully we get no errors. There we go, perfect. The bot is actually loading. And if we go to Discord, we can just double check that the bot is in fact online. Um, it should be, but you always wanna make sure that uh, the token you're using is actually the right token. And it's pointing to the right bot. Let's go to our uh, JDA tutorial server. And there we go, our bot is online. So everything is working great. All right, so that's gonna do it for this episode. Thanks guys so much for watching. In the next few episodes, we'll actually be coding some fun features for our bot. So get excited for that, and I will see you in the next episode.